Welcome to Microchips Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. Taiwan Minister says TSMC has received China chip waiver extension from US. Can China leapfrog ASML in its quest for semiconductor self-reliance? Taiwan will not surrender its semiconductor supremacy. TSMC plans to produce 6 nanometers chips in second Japan plant. U.S. stocks futures rise as Treasury yields retreat ahead of inflation data. Taiwan minister says TSMC has received China chip waiver extension from U.S. Reuters. Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company, TSMC, has reportedly received a waiver extension from the United States to supply U.S. chip equipment to its factories in China. The waiver allows TSMC, the world's largest contract chip maker, to continue operating its factory in Nanjing, China, which produces less advanced chips. The details of the extension have not been disclosed. The waiver comes as part of the U.S. government's efforts to cut off China from certain semiconductor chips made with U.S. tools in a bid to slow Beijing's technological and military advances. Can China leapfrog ASML in its quest for semiconductor self-reliance? Diplomat. The Dutch government is introducing export controls on ASML technology, which will impact the company's sales to China. The move comes as part of a broader international effort to collaborate on issues relating to China's chipmaking industry. The United States has been pressuring the Netherlands to align with its approach to Chinese tech. These export controls are likely to impede China's progress within the semiconductor industry and limit Chinese companies to creating slower and less efficient chips. However, China has been investing heavily in its domestic semiconductor industry with the hope of eventually becoming independent of global supply chains. China is developing a shortcut to achieving high levels of chip efficiency through a process known as advanced packaging. This process involves stacking techniques that aggregate microchip components to create a more powerful device. If successful, China could create powerful chips domestically without requiring the most powerful equipment. The United States and its allies are working on developing this technique as well, both to benefit their domestic tech industries and to understand how China's semiconductor industry is developing. There are concerns about the security risks posed by ASML's employees in China, especially in light of recent cases of espionage reported by the company. These employees could potentially be pressured to steal from ASML. Efforts must be made to enhance the company's security and monitor all possible methods of illegal infiltration. Despite these challenges, China remains determined to achieve semiconductor independence and will continue to invest in its domestic industry. Taiwan will not surrender its semiconductor supremacy. Economist. The Taiwanese semiconductor sector is crucial to global electronics and the economies of major powers such as the US, Europe, and China. However, as countries seek to reduce their dependence on Taiwan, the island is fighting back to maintain its dominance. For example, TSMC, the Taiwanese chip champion, plans to keep its most advanced fabs in Taiwan, while ASC Holdings, the world's largest chip packager, is increasing its R&D budget and keeping most of it in Taiwan. The Taiwanese government is also supporting the industry through subsidies and investment in chip design. TSMC plans to produce 6 nanometers chips in second Japan plant. Nikkei Asia. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co., TSMC, is planning to produce 6 nanometer chips at its second production facility in Japan. The chips will be manufactured at a new plant in Kumamoto, southwestern Japan, and will be the most advanced semiconductors to be made in the country. The total investment for the project is estimated at $13.3 billion, with the Japanese government considering providing up to $8 billion in aid for the semiconductor sector as part of an economic stimulus package. The support measures will include subsidies for the TSMC plant. U.S. stocks futures rise as Treasury yields retreat ahead of inflation data. Yahoo! Futures tracking Wall Street's main indexes rose on Thursday as Treasury yields continued to ease, while investors looked forward to crucial inflation data to gauge the Federal Reserve's interest rate outlook. China's Longzis completes 132 million US dollar takeover of Suzhou plant from PowerTech. South China Morning Post. Chinese storage system specialist Shenzhen Longzis Electronics has completed its $132 million takeover of a mainland plant from Taiwanese company PowerTech Technology. The acquisition reflects the ongoing efforts of Chinese tech firms to solidify the country's position in the global semiconductor supply chain. China's share of outsourced assembly and test services is forecast to increase to 22.4% by 2027, up from 22.1% last year, according to market research firm IDC. The best Prime Day laptop deals you can still get, Apple, HP, Lenovo and more. Yahoo!
Amazon's October Prime Day has seen major discounts on laptops from Apple, MSI, Lenovo, and HP. Among the best deals is the Asus C424 Chromebook for $212, a record low, and the Acer Nitro Gaming Laptop, down more than $80. The Lenovo 2022 IdeaPad 3 laptop is almost 60% off at $415, and the HP Pavilion X362 in one laptop is $90 off at $760. Apple's MacBook Air is $249 off with a coupon at $750 and the 2021 MacBook Pro with Apple M1 Pro chip is $549 off at $1,950. The MSI GF65 gaming laptop is $99 off at $1,100. Intel CEO needs to land a big customer, and the clock is ticking. Bloomberg. Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger is on a mission to turn around the company and is building new factories in a bid to regain the firm's technological leadership by 2025. To do this, Gelsinger wants to transform Intel into a foundry, making chips for other companies, and he has promised investors that he will reveal customers for this business in 2021. However, so far, Intel has not secured any major customers, which is a key component of its strategy to rebuild the company, and analysts and investors are eagerly awaiting news of a flagship client. While Intel has signed up Ericsson to make some networking chips in its factories and is in talks with Qualcomm, Amazon, and others, the company needs a large customer to pay up front and guarantee future supply. Gelsinger knows that Intel has to prove that it has overcome its manufacturing missteps and regained its technological edge before it can attract major clients. Taiwan urges progress on EU investment deal as bloc courts chip firms. Reuters. Taiwan is urging the European Union, EU, to make effective progress on talks for a long-stalled investment deal, as the bloc looks to strengthen ties with major chipmakers based on the island, notably TSMC. Taiwan has repeatedly called for a bilateral investment agreement, BIA, with the EU, saying it would encourage more Taiwanese investment, particularly from chip companies. The EU designated Taiwan as a candidate for a BIA in 2015, but no discussions have taken place. Despite the lack of formal ties with Taiwan, the EU has been courting the island as a potential partner under the European Chips Act, aimed at increasing semiconductor production in Europe and reducing dependence on Asia. Huawei's comeback and Japan's time to shine. Nikkei Asia. Companies and investors in Taiwan are increasingly looking to Japan as an alternative to China amid ongoing geopolitical tensions, according to Nikkei Asia. Taiwanese firms have reportedly been investing in Japanese property due to the weakening yen, while tech executives have said the time is ripe for collaboration and investment in Japan to reduce dependence on China. Meanwhile, Huawei is stockpiling components and aims to double its smartphone shipments to 70 million units by 2024. However, the US is planning to expand the scope of its export controls on chip-making tools and AI chips, which could present major hurdles for Huawei's comeback plan. The European Union is also looking to reduce its reliance on China and Chinese tech, but its heavy trade dependence with China will make this difficult. Saudi Arabia's King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, KAUST, is collaborating with Chinese universities to develop AI, but there are concerns that the partnership could jeopardize KAUST's access to US-made chips. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Degrees world. Today, we have an interesting mix of news from the semiconductor industry. Let's dive in. First, we have news that Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, has received a waiver extension from the United States to supply U.S. chip equipment to its factories in China. This waiver allows TSMC to continue operating its factory in Nanjing, China, which produces less advanced chips. This move is part of the U.S. government's efforts to cut off China from certain semiconductor chips made with U.S. tools in order to slow Beijing's technological and military advances. On the other hand, China is exploring advanced packaging techniques to achieve high levels of chip efficiency. If successful, this could allow China to create powerful chips domestically without requiring the most advanced equipment. The United States and its allies are also working on developing this technique for their own domestic tech industries and to understand China's semiconductor industry better. Meanwhile, Taiwan is determined to maintain its semiconductor supremacy. Major players like TSMC and ASC Holdings are investing in research and development and keeping their most advanced fabs in Taiwan. The Taiwanese government is also providing support through subsidies and investment in chip design. Taiwan knows the importance of its semiconductor sector and is fighting to maintain its dominance. Moving on, we have news from Japan, where TSMC is planning to produce 6 nanometer chips at its second production facility. 
The Japanese government is considering providing up to $8 billion in aid for the semiconductor sector as part of an economic stimulus package. This investment reflects the global effort to strengthen domestic semiconductor industries and reduce dependence on foreign supply chains. In other news, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger is on a mission to turn around the company by transforming it into a foundry that makes chips for other companies. However, Intel needs to secure major customers to guarantee future supply and prove that it has regained its technological edge. Investors and analysts eagerly await news of a flagship client for Intel's foundry business. Lastly, Taiwan is urging the European Union, EU, to make progress on talks for a long-stalled investment deal. Taiwan sees the potential for increased Taiwanese investment, particularly from chip companies, if a bilateral investment agreement is reached. The EU, on the other hand, is looking to strengthen ties with major chipmakers in Taiwan, such as TSMC, under its European Chips Act. That wraps up today's news from the semiconductor industry. It's clear that there is intense competition and strategic maneuvering happening in this field. The global race for semiconductor supremacy is heating up, and every player is vying for a piece of the pie. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these developments. What do you make of the US-China tensions in the semiconductor industry? Do you think Taiwan can maintain its dominance? And how do you see the future of chip manufacturing shaping up? Let's discuss. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.